Scott Prairlings, welcome to Tuesday. I'm still getting situated here. I was a little nervous this morning because I started the live and I didn't get a notification from Facebook for a while. It took longer than usual for them to ding me and tell me that Rehoboth was live. So I hope you all got it. You're here, so I guess you did. Okay, um, it is Tuesday. It is the 11th of January. And it is 2022. And we have gathered to pray matins. Yes, I'm going to adjust myself again. Hang on. Don't want to scare anybody. Okay, I can live with that. How about you? All right, so what are we doing today? We are hearing from Colossians chapter 3. Today, we are going to sing the hymn, Christ, when for us you were baptized. And it is being sung by the virtual choir quartet actually from Sammamish Hills Lutheran Church. Remember them? They're a suburb of Seattle in Washington. And I don't know if that's in the green book or not. It's in the new hymnal. The new hymnal which is about to become the old hymnal. Um, yeah. So Psalm 110, that hymn, Colossians 3, and then the commentary isn't really a commentary, it's a prayer written by Francis Greenwood. I forgot his last name. Let me look it up. He was a Unitarian Universalist pastor and he taught theology at Harvard. Peabody or Peabody. I don't know which way he pronounced it. His dad was a Unitarian clergyman. Um, and he has a lovely prayer about unity. And I was going to use that as our, not I was, I am going to use that as our commentary today. And I have this cup today for a very specific reason. 
This has words on it. I don't know if I've ever showed you them before. But I chose this today because, and I know you'll find this hard to believe, I smiled this morning. And I smiled this morning because I looked out the window, as my grandma would say, and I saw freshly fallen snow. And I get to go out, and it's cold. I'm so happy. I don't get to go out in very long. I have to go pick up my laundry, like you needed to know that. But I still get to go out in it. Anywho, we're here to pray, Madden. Plus, this is double chocolate coffee. Yeah. Okay. Epiphany Mountains. We are still in Epiphany. We will be till March the 2nd, in case anyone asks you. So we are praying Epiphany Mountains today. We are finding the page. We have found it. Now we will find that place in our head and our heart. We connect with our dear Lord so we can actually worship. I'll be right back. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. Psalm 110 The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord will send the scepter of your power out of Zion, saying, Rule over your enemies round about you. Princely state has been yours from the day of your birth. In the beauty of holiness have I begotten you, like dew from the womb of the morning. The Lord has sworn, and he will not recant. You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord, who is at your right hand, will smite kings in the day of his wrath. He will rule over the nations. He will heap high the corpses. He will smash heads over the wide earth. He will drink from the brook beside the road. Therefore, he will lift high his head. Let us pray. Almighty God, make known in every place the perfect offering of your Son, the eternal High Priest of the New Jerusalem, and so consecrate all nations to be your holy people, that the kingdom of Christ, your Anointed One, may come in its fullness. And to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and praise, now and forever. Amen. Here's our hymn, continuing with the Baptism of Jesus theme, Christ, when for us you were baptized. Let us pray. All-powerful Father, you have made known the birth of the Savior by the light of a star. May he continue to guide us with his light, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Reading from Colossians chapter 3. 
If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you once walked when you lived in them, but now put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and foul talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old nature with its practices and have put on the new nature, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there cannot be Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This book has every day an Old Testament lesson, an Epistle lesson, a Gospel lesson, a reading, and then two prayers. The prayer of the day, which we use, and then there's a closing prayer, which sometimes we use. And what I'm reading you today is the closing prayer, which I already said was written by Francis Greenwood Peabody. From the noise of diverse doctrines and the confusion of competing claims, we lift our prayers to your tranquilizing assurance of unity at the heart of things, and of that fatherhood in you which makes one brotherhood of man. We have been led astray by self-confidence, or betrayed by self-distrust. The divisions which are temporary have hid from us the ideals which are eternal. The truths which are near have shut out the wider revelations. We have known in part and prophesied in part, and that which is perfect has eluded us. From futile controversies and presumptuous claims, and not less from the pride of heresy and the love of schism, Good Lord, deliver us. Fix our minds not upon the disputes which divide the church, but upon the majestic simplicity and abiding authority of faith, hope, and love, that we may walk worthy of the vocation to which we are called, forgiving one another holding before us the chastening vision of cooperative discipleship, a church of living stones built up into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood of consecrated lives. 
Our prayer for the church is not for the abolition of differences or for identity of convictions. It is the more reasonable and effective prayer for faith which finds room for differences and which strengthens conviction. We dare to pray that the majestic hope of Jesus Christ may not be long delayed and that all who follow him may be one as you, Father, are in him and he in us, not in identity of opinions, but in unity of intention and desire, guided by your will, obedient to your will, and above all things, putting on love, which is the bond of perfection, until in diversity of gifts there will be one spirit, and in differences of administration, one Lord. <sighs> yes, Pastor Greenwood, Pastor Peabody, I always forget his last name. Yes, it's exactly what Paul was saying. In Colossians, it's exactly what you will hear Paul saying this Sunday in our epistle lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Why do we have division? And not just in the church, but in the world. I mean, it's bad enough in the church. There shouldn't be division in the church, but there is. Because we've left no room in the church for diversity. We say we have, but we haven't. So we think this is what I believe, so that's what everybody has to believe. And if you don't, then you're a heretic and you're not really Christian. That's what we tell each other. That's the big fight going on in our country right now. Between the evangelical right and the progressive, liberal, whatever you want to call the other people. And the people in the middle going, I don't know, leave me alone. But that's exactly the fight. You don't believe exactly what I believe, so you aren't Christian. And that attitude gets out into the world. You don't believe exactly what I believe. Whether it's in our spiritual life or our political life or our any other opinions we might have. So you're worthless. That's how we've been treating each other. And I was going to say lately, but when I think about it, that's pretty much how we've been treating each other. I mean, why, why did Cain kill Abel? He was jealous. Because God accepted Abel's sacrifice and not Cain's. We don't even know why. But right there, there's the vision in how people worship. And one kills the other over it. It's been happening ever since. Why? Why? Has anybody ever looked at the world? And I don't mean world the way John means it. I mean this planet we live on, the Earth. What do you see when you look at the earth? Does everything look exactly the same? If you feed the birds, when you look out the window, do you see birds that are all exactly the same? It's all, I almost said robins. But robins mock me when they come and tell me winter's over. Is it all um, chickadees? Are those the only birds that we have coming to our bird feeder? That would be boring. Or all starlings, or all crows, or all blue jays. 
No. When you look out in your yard and there are trees, are they all the same kind of tree? No. When you look out in the world, this earth that our Lord created, it is incredibly diverse. Still, people, scientists, are discovering new species, things they never knew existed, in places where you'd think there couldn't be life. They find life incredibly diverse and learning more and more, as we should have figured out a long time ago, as lots of other societies and peoples figured out a long time ago, um, that we're all dependent on each other, interdependent. This world we're in, we were created that way. You can see that in the garden. God says, here's the garden. It has everything you need in it. Take care of it. Interdependent. It means we need each other and we need everything. And we need it all to be diverse. What if there was only one vegetable? Better not be cauliflower. What if there was only one kind of meat? What if there was only one grain? How boring would that be? What if there was only one kind of people? What if there was only one way to believe and worship God? What if there was only one way to think and act? What if there was only... That would be so boring. What would be the point? It wouldn't need to be more people because, you know, and nothing would ever get discovered because people would all be thinking the same thing all the time. I know what I'm trying to say. I don't know if you know, but I know. And in the church, we do that to one another. We look down on each other because one person practices this way of worshiping Yahweh and the other person practices that way and mine's better than yours and you're stupid. I call him Yahweh, you call him Allah, you're stupid. I call him Yahweh, you call him Hashem, you're stupid. Why do we do that to each other? And then we wonder why our world's a mess. And Dr. Peabody, I just gave him his right honorific, Dr. Peabody rightly says, what the heck? I almost said something else. Has anybody read the Bible? What does it say in there? Faith, hope, those are the big two. And the one above all is love. Why is that so hard to get into our heads? Faith, hope, love. That's all. And if you actually talk to people who are different, different was in air quotes, which I hate, who are different, that's what you'll see. If you scratch the surface of anybody, anybody's convictions, that's what you'll find. That's all anybody wants. They want to have faith. They want to believe that there's a God out there who's greater than we are. And the hope that that brings, people are seeking that. And they want to be loved and to love. That's all people want. And that's all God ever said for us to do, right? What is... Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. What is that except faith, hope, and love? Paul is saying in Colossians today, you aren't the way you used to be. You aren't. That old broken nature, old Adam, 
Old Adam died in baptism, in the waters of baptism. Why do you insist on resurrecting him? Why? He's no good. He does not follow the will of God. He doesn't even know the will of God. And if he does, he doesn't care. Why do you want to keep resurrecting that nature? It's not yours anymore. You have a new identity. You belong to Christ. You're a holy people. Set apart by God for God's purposes. Why would you want to do anything else? Why? You can ponder that further throughout this cold day. Meanwhile, we'll pray the Benedictus and thank God that he came to live among us to ask us that exact same question. For he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up the horn of salvation for us in the forgiven David. Who have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. And the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our and you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Thy name, 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Thanks, prayerlings. Now go enjoy your day. This cold, snowy day. If you don't enjoy it and you don't have to go out, good for you. Stay home and be warm. And if you do have to go out and you don't enjoy it, be careful and bundle up. And those of us who are going out and do enjoy it, who knows what we'll do, except smile. All right, dear ones, I'll be back tomorrow. We'll pray again. Today you can ponder faith, hope, and love. You can live in it, and you can look for it in other people, in a diversity, a myriad of ways that those things are expressed. God is good, isn't he? All right, I will see you tomorrow. I love you. He loves you a bazillion times more. Guten Tag.